What a joke. Is this really the best humanity can do? Scoffed Admiral Zyloth, watching the ancient human ship limp into harbor. The sleek Arcturian vessels swarmed around the USS Endurance like sharks circling wounded prey. On the bridge, Captain George Johnson gritted his teeth, his dark hands clenching into fists as the mocking alien chatter filtered through the comms. For too long, the Arcturians had treated humanity like primitives, barely tolerated in the galactic community. As the Endurance approached the ramshackle space station orbiting humanity's first extrasolar colony, Johnson reflected bitterly on the sacrifices his ancestors made to reach Alpha Centauri. The prefab domes of the human settlement paled next to the glittering alien cities sprawled across the planet below. Captain, we've been denied docking at the main port, reported First Officer Alex Tanaka, his voice tight. They're redirecting us to a cargo terminal on the far side. Johnson nodded grimly, unsurprised by the snub. But humanity's days as galactic doormats were numbered. He was one of the few who knew that scientists on Earth had developed a functioning wormhole drive in secret, a breakthrough that could leapfrog human technology and turn the tables on their alien detractors. As the Endurance maneuvered into its berth, an urgent transmission burst through from Fleetcom. The wormhole drive tests had succeeded beyond all expectations, but the project was at risk. They had a traitor in their midst, leaking intel to the Arcturians. Johnson had new orders. Reroute to the research base. Take command of the elite security team. Find the mole before irreparable damage was done. The future of the human race hung in the balance. The USS Endurance emerged from warp speed in a remote corner of the galaxy, approaching the secret research base nestled on the cratered surface of a nameless moon. Captain Johnson leaned forward in his command chair. Dark eyes fixed on the display as the base came into view. A sprawling complex of domes and tunnels burrowed deep into the airless rock. As the ship settled into orbit, a shuttle ferried Johnson down to a hidden hangar bay. Stepping onto the moon's surface, he was greeted by the imposing figure of Commander Alexei Volkov. The Russian's craggy face was etched with grim lines as he led Johnson through a maze of reinforced corridors to the heart of the facility. In the central lab, a sleek obsidian archway dominated the room, the wormhole drive prototype. Dr. Amir Patel stood before it, his brown skin pale under the harsh lights. Captain Johnson, I wish we were meeting under better circumstances, Patel said, shaking his hand. As you've been briefed, the drive is exceeding all projections, but the leak in our security is jeopardizing everything. Johnson nodded, mind-focused. What about this Dr. Voss? You believe she's been framed? Patel's eyes flashed with conviction. Zara's contributions have been invaluable. I'd stake my life on her loyalty. Suddenly, alarms blared as the base shook with a distant explosion. Volkov swore in Russian, checking his rifle. Perimeter breach. We're under attack. Johnson drew his sidearm as soldiers rushed to defensive positions. On the security feeds, he caught glimpses of black-clad Arcturian commandos flooding into the base, their movements inhumanly swift. Gunfire erupted in the corridors, the chatter of human weapons met by the sizzling blasts of alien plasma rifles. Johnson and Volkov fought their way towards the lab, dispatching Arcturian attackers with grim efficiency. They burst into the central chamber to find Dr. Patel slumped against the wormhole drive, a charred hole in his chest. Johnson knelt beside him, gripping the physicist's hand. Dr. Voss, Patel gasped, dark blood bubbling from his lips. She's the key. You must find her. As Patel breathed his last, proximity alerts lit up the displays, a second wave of ships descending from orbit. Johnson's eyes met Volkov's, a wordless understanding passing between the two warriors. The battle for humanity's future had only just begun. Captain Johnson strode through the shadowed corridors of the seedy spaceport, his hand resting on the grip of his concealed sidearm. First Officer Alex Tanaka moved at his side, her dark eyes scanning the crowd of aliens and humans that thronged the grimy thoroughfare. Krull, their hulking Arcturian informant, led the way, his gray skin glistening under the neon lights. The Shadow Broker safe house is not far, Krull rumbled, his voice pitched low. But we must be cautious. Eyes are everywhere in this place. 
Johnson nodded, his eyes sharp. The data fragments left by Dr. Patel had pointed them here, to this lawless outpost on the fringes of civilized space. Somewhere in this maze of alleyways and dingy cantinas, Zara Voss was hiding. The half-human, half-Arcturian scientist held the key to stabilizing the wormhole drive and humanity's future. Krull guided them down a narrow side street, the air thick with the acrid stench of spice and engine grease. He paused before a nondescript door, wrapping his knuckles against the rusted metal in a complex pattern. After a moment, the door creaked open, revealing a dimly lit room. Inside, a trio of heavily armed shadow broker agents awaited, their faces obscured by tinted visors. Johnson and Tanaka tensed, hands drifting towards their weapons. You have the payment? One of the agents asked, his voice distorted by his helmet's vocoder. Kroll tossed a bulging pouch onto the table. Fifty thousand credits, untraceable. Now, where is Zara Voss? The agent gestured to a side door. Through there. But only the humans. The Arcturian waits here. Johnson and Tanaka exchanged a glance, then moved cautiously through the door. They found themselves in a small, sparsely furnished room. Zara Voss stood in the center, her delicate features marred by exhaustion and fear. Captain Johnson, she asked, her voice trembling. Thank the stars you've come. I don't have much time. Suddenly the door slammed open. Commander Volkov strode in, flanked by a squad of Arcturian commandos. Johnson and Tanaka reached for their weapons, but it was too late. Plasma blasts sizzled through the air, dropping the Shadow Broker agents before they could react. Tanaka cried out as a bolt caught her in the shoulder, spinning her to the ground. Volkov! Johnson snarled, leveling his sidearm at the Russian. You traitorous bastard! Volkov smiled coldly, his rifle aimed at Johnson's heart. You were always too trusting, Captain. The Arcturian Dominion has owned me for years. All of this, the Wormhole Project, the Atzaks, Patel's death, it was all part of the plan. Zara leapt forward, desperation etched on her face. Please, Commander, you can't let them have the drive. The feedback loop... Volkov's eyes narrowed. Silence, half-breed. You've caused enough trouble with your meddling. The Dominion will prevail in... A.I.J. Krull barreled through the door, his massive fist smashing into Volkov's jaw. The Russian crumpled as the room erupted into chaos. Plasma bolts and bullets filled the air as Johnson and Zara dragged Tanaka behind an overturned table. Krull roared as he grappled with the Arcturian commandos, his gray skin smoldering with plasma burns. Captain! Zara shouted over the din. We have to get back to the base. I've discovered a flaw in the wormhole drive. If the Arcturians seize it before I can stabilize the quantum field matrices... Johnson gritted his teeth, firing off a volley of shots that dropped a commando in his tracks. Krull! We're leaving! The giant Arcturian nodded, slamming the last commando into the wall with bone-crushing force. They burst out of the safe house, racing through the twisting alleys as plasma bolts sizzled past their heads. The spaceport was in chaos, aliens and humans alike scattering before the commandos in hot pursuit. As they reached the docking bays, Johnson's calm crackled to life. It was the Endurance waiting in orbit. Captain, you need to see this, putting it on your heads-up display. A news feed from the Galactic News Network flickered to life before Johnson's eyes. His heart sank as he saw the headlines screaming across the screen. Rumors of human wormhole drive. Sparks galactic turmoil. Arcturian factions debate preemptive strike. Marginalized species. See opportunity in chaos. Johnson shared a grim look with Zara and Krull as they boarded their waiting ship. The wormhole arms race had begun. The survival of humanity and the future of the stars hung in the balance. The Endurance leapt into warp, racing towards the distant research base and the monumental task that awaited them there. Johnson knew that the decisions made in the next few days would shape the course of history, and he would need all of his skill, courage, and cunning to navigate the treacherous path ahead. The Endurance dropped out of warp, its hull scorched from the near miss of Arcturian plasma cannons. Captain Johnson stood on the bridge, watching as the gas giant's stormy surface filled the viewscreen. The research base on its moon beckoned like a sanctuary. 
Docking procedures initiated, Tanaka reported, her arm now in a sling. No signs of pursuit. Johnson nodded, allowing himself a moment of relief. He turned to Zara Voss, who stood rigidly at his side. Ready to get to work, doctor? The half-human, half-Arcturian scientist mismatched eyes, one brown, one iridescent purple, met his gaze. More than ready, Captain. Every moment we delay puts us at greater risk. As they disembarked, Commander Eric Gustafson greeted them, his Nordic features set in grim lines. Welcome back, sir. I've implemented new security protocols. This base is now a fortress. Johnson clasped the Swede's shoulder. Good man. We'll need it. In the heart of the complex, Zara wasted no time. She strode into the lab, startling the haggard scientists hunched over workstations. I need full access to the drive schematics and test data, she demanded, her fingers already flying over a nearby console. Hours blurred into days as Zara worked tirelessly, fueled by stimulants and sheer persistence. Johnson found her slumped over her desk one night, muttering equations in her sleep. He gently draped a blanket over her shoulders, marveling at the dedication burning within this brilliant hybrid. On the fourth day, alarms blared throughout the base. Johnson sprinted to the command center, where Gustafsson's face was lit by the eerie glow of tactical displays. Verdillion drones, sir, the commander reported, a swarm of them probing our outer defenses. Johnson watched as the insectoid ships darted and weaved, testing for weaknesses. Hold fire unless directly threatened, he ordered. We can't afford to escalate. As the drones retreated, a priority transmission came through from Fleet Command. Admiral Zhao's hologram flickered to life, her expression grave. Captain, the situation is deteriorating rapidly. The Arcturian Concordance is fracturing, and we're detecting massive fleet movements near their core systems. Meanwhile, Verdillion hives are emerging from hibernation across three sectors. We need that drive operational, and soon. Johnson's eyes sharp. Understood, Admiral. We're pushing as hard as we can. In the lab, Zara's eyes widened as she pored over the latest test results. This can't be right, she muttered, rechecking her calculations. A gentle hand touched her shoulder. She looked up to see Varala, the Arcturian officer who had become her unlikely confidant. What troubles you, Zara? Vrala asked, her luminescent skin rippling with concern. Zara gestured at the data scrolling across her screen. The gravitational tolerances? They're orders of magnitude beyond what we anticipated. It's why we keep losing drones. If we don't account for this variable, any manned test could be catastrophic. Vrala's four-fingered hand tightened on Zara's shoulder. You must solve this, little one, for all our sakes. In that moment, as alien and human worked side by side, a fragile hope blossomed. Perhaps there was a path forward that didn't end in war. But time was running out. Beyond the sanctuary of the moon base, fleets gathered in the darkness between stars. The fate of galaxies hung in the balance, waiting to see which way the cosmic scales would tip. Zara's eyes flashed with triumph as she burst into the command center. Captain, I've done it. I've identified the gravitational flux stabilization issue. Johnson turned from the tactical displays, hope kindling in his eyes. That's the breakthrough we needed. What's next? The scientist's excitement dimmed slightly. Implementation is complex. We need to modulate artificial quantum fields with extreme precision, but the energy requirements are astronomical. Gustafsson frowned. How astronomical? Far beyond our current capabilities, Zara admitted. We'd need massive quantities of exotic matter and energy reserves we simply don't have. Johnson's heart made. He opened a secure channel to Fleet Command, requesting an emergency resource drop. Admiral Zhao's hologram flickered to life, her expression grim. Understood, Captain. I'm dispatching a resupply convoy immediately, but be advised, Vridillian activity has spiked in your sector. The warning proved prescient. Days later, as the convoy approached, proximity alarms blared. Johnson watched in dismay as Verdillion ships swarmed the supply vessels, their attack patterns displaying an uncanny familiarity with human tactics. They knew exactly where to hit us, Tanaka muttered, her good hand clenched into a fist. We've got a leak. With Zara's breakthrough on hold, 
Johnson was forced to divert their dwindling resources to shore up the base's defenses. The Viridillians grew bolder, probing attacks becoming more frequent and aggressive. Weeks of stalemate stretched into months. Then, without warning, the fragile equilibrium shattered. Multiple warp signatures, Gustafson shouted. It's the Arcturians, a full battle fleet. The command center erupted into frantic activity as the scope of the assault became clear. Hundreds of Arcturian warships dropped out of warp, their weapons already charging. They're jamming our long-range comms, Tanaka reported. We're cut off. Johnson's mind raced. They were vastly outnumbered, their defenses insufficient against such an overwhelming force. He turned to Zara, desperation etched on his face. Doctor, please tell me you have something, anything we can use. Zara's mismatched eyes gleamed with a dangerous light. It's risky, Captain. Extremely risky. But we might be able to conduct a sublight micro-jump using my incomplete equations. If we can reposition the base within the planet's electromagnetic shielding... You want to jump the entire base? Johnson's voice was incredulous. With untested equations? Zara nodded grimly. It's that or certain annihilation. Krull stepped forward, his massive frame seeming to fill the room. I will accompany Dr. Voss. My knowledge of Arcturian systems may prove useful. Johnson hesitated for a heartbeat, then nodded sharply. Do it. What followed was a blur of frantic activity. Zara worked feverishly, inputting her intricate calculations into the base's quantum field arrays. Around them, the structure shuddered as Arcturian weapons fire began to penetrate the outer defenses. Ready, Zara called out, her fingers poised over the activation sequence. Johnson took a deep breath. Initiate jump. Reality itself seemed to twist and buckle. A soundless roar filled their ears as the entire research complex phased into an unstable sublight wormhole aperture. For an eternal instant, they teetered on the edge of oblivion. Then with a bone-jarring lurch, they rematerialized. Emergency klaxons blared as damage reports flooded in. Through the viewports, they could see only roiling clouds of gas, lit by vast arcs of lightning. They had done it. The base now floated deep within the gas giant's planet-wide storm system, shielded from sensors and weapons alike. But the cost had been high. Crow! Zara cried out, rushing to where the Arcturian lay crumpled on the deck. His gray skin was mottled with radiation burns. His breathing labored. As medical teams swarmed in, Johnson's comm pinged with an urgent transmission. It was fleet command, their faces grim but determined. Captain Johnson, Admiral Zhao began, in light of recent developments, you are hereby authorized to sh shift from defensive operations. Your new primary objective, weaponize the wormhole drive for deployment against Arcturian forces. Before Johnson could respond, a second message came through. This one heavily encrypted. The sender identified themselves as a human agent embedded within Verdillian forces. They offered a tantalizing possibility, an alliance against their common Arcturian foe. Johnson stared at the two messages, the weight of galaxies seeming to press down upon his shoulders. The choices before him would shape the future of entire civilizations. But which path to choose? Johnson's fingers hovered over the console, the weight of galaxies pressing down upon him. With a deep breath, he made his choice. Zara, prepare for emergency micro-jump. We're going in. The scientist's eyes widened. Captain, the equations are incomplete. The risks are better than certain annihilation, Johnson cut her off. Do it. Zara's fingers flew across the controls, inputting a dizzying array of quantum calculations. The base shuddered as Arcturian weapons fire intensified. Ready, Zara called out. Johnson nodded grimly. Initiate jump. Reality warped. A silent scream tore through every molecule as the entire complex phased into an unstable sublight. Aperture. For an eternal instant, they balanced on the knife edge of oblivion. Then with a bone-jarring lurch, they rematerialized. Klaxons blared. Through the viewports, roiling clouds of gas ignited with titanic lightning strikes. They had done it. The base now drifted deep within the gas giant's churning storms, 
shielded from sensors and weapons alike. But the cost was steep. Crawl! Zara cried out, rushing to where the Arcturian lay crumpled on the deck. His gray skin was mottled with angry red burns. His breathing labored. As medical teams swarmed in, Johnson's calm pinged. Admiral Zhao's hologram flickered to life, her expression steely. Captain Johnson, you are hereby authorized to weaponize the wormhole drive for deployment against Arcturian forces, effective immediately. Before Johnson could respond, a second message arrived, heavily encrypted. The sender identified themselves as Viper, a human agent embedded within Verdillion forces. They offered an alliance against their common Arcturian foe. Johnson's mind raced. With Kroll critically injured and the base damaged, their options were limited. He turned to Zara, who was hunched over a console, frantically analyzing data from the microjump. Doctor, how soon can we stabilize the drive for offensive operations? Zara's mismatched eyes met his, filled with equal parts excitement and trepidation. With the real-world data from our jump, I can refine the calculations. Give me 12 hours. Johnson nodded. Make it happen. The next half day was a blur of feverish activity. Repair crews worked to patch hull breaches while Zara and her team pushed the wormhole drive to its limits. In the medical bay, Kroll clung to life by a thread. Finally, Zara emerged from the lab, her face drawn but triumphant. It's ready, Captain. We can open a stable micro wormhole for a precision strike. Johnson wasted no time. He assembled a small strike team and laid out the plan. They would use the wormhole to infiltrate a key Arcturian shipyard, sabotaging it from within. This is a one-way trip, Johnson warned the volunteers. But if we succeed, we create an opening for our potential Vradilian allies. The team nodded grimly. They understood the stakes. In the command center, tension crackled like electricity. Zara's fingers danced across the controls, inputting the final coordinates. Wormhole stabilizing, she reported. Opening in three, two, one. A shimmering portal materialized before them, offering a glimpse into the heart of Arcturian territory. The strike team plunged through without hesitation. What followed was a symphony of destruction. Aided by the quantum wake's disruptive flux, the human operatives wreaked havoc on the shipyard systems. Explosions bloomed in silence across the vastness of space. But as the last charges detonated, the team found themselves cut off. Johnson watched helplessly as the wormhole collapsed, trapping them behind enemy lines. He had little time to mourn. The comms erupted with chatter as wave after wave of Redillion hunter-killer drones poured through newly formed biocorrosive wormholes. The insectoid machines tore into the reeling Arcturian fleets with horrifying efficiency. Just as victory seemed within reach, proximity alarms screamed to life. Arcturian commandos had used the chaos to launch a desperate assault on the research base. They're after the drive, Gustafsson shouted over the din of weapons fire. Johnson sprinted toward the lab, plasma bolts sizzling past his head. He found Zara locked in combat with a pair of Arcturian assassins, her lab coat singed and torn. With practice precision, Johnson dropped both attackers but more were coming. Keep them off me, Zara yelled, her fingers flying over the drive's control panel. I need to lock in the harmonics calibration or we lose everything. Johnson took up a defensive position, his mind racing. They were outgunned and outnumbered. Unless. He keyed his comm, praying the signal would punch through. Viper, this is Johnson. We need an extraction now. For agonizing seconds, there was only static. Then a gravelly voice responded. Understood, human. Prepare for immediate retrieval. The lab's far wall exploded inward as a massive Verdillion breaching pod slammed through. Nightmarish insectoid warriors poured out, their mandibles clicking in anticipation. Johnson found himself in the surreal position of watching humanity's most feared enemies rip apart the Arcturian commandos. It was a slaughter. As the last Arcturian fell, Zara's triumphant shout rose above the carnage. Stabilization complete. The drive is fully operational. A hulking Verdillion stepped forward, 
its compound eyes fixed on Johnson. The drive. Now. Johnson's hand tightened on his weapon. After everything they had sacrificed, could he simply hand over such power? Zara's voice cut through his indecision. Captain, Krull is gone. Johnson turned to see tears streaming down the hybrid scientist's face. In that moment, he realized the true cost of their victory. The Verdillion's mandibles clicked impatiently. Your decision, human? Johnson looked from Zara to the alien, acutely aware that his next words would shape the fate of galaxies. Galaxies. Johnson inhaled sharply, his decision crystallizing. We share the drive, he said firmly. But on our terms... The Verdillion's compound eyes flickered, processing this unexpected response. Before it could reply, alarms blared throughout the base. Massive energy spike detected? Gustafson's voice crackled over the comm. Arcturian ships are... They're firing on their own shipyards. Johnson sprinted to the nearest view screen, the Verdillion warriors close behind. The scene that greeted them was apocalyptic. Brilliant flashes of antimatter annihilation bloomed across the shipyards, each detonation sending out waves of destructive energy. They're scorching their own territory, Zara breathed, her face pale, to keep us from using it. The base shuddered violently as the first quantum shockwaves hit. Warning lights flashed across every console. Containment field destabilizing, Gustafson shouted. We're looking at a cascade failure. Zara's eyes widened in horror. If that field collapses, the wormhole drive will tear a hole in reality itself. Johnson turned to her, desperation etched on his face. Options, doctor? Zara's fingers flew across the console, inputting a dizzying array of calculations. I can open an emergency conduit, she said, her voice tight with concentration. Channel the destructive energy into subspace before it overwhelms us. Do it, Johnson ordered. The air crackled with ozone as Zar engaged the drive. A shimmering portal materialized in the heart of the lab, pulsing with eldritch energies. The Vradilian warriors chittered nervously, backing away from the otherworldly phenomenon. Through the view screen, Johnson watched as the waves of destruction from the Arcturian bombardment seemed to twist and warp, drawn inexorably into the subspace maw Zar had conjured. The shuddering of the base gradually subsided as the immediate danger passed. But their victory was short-lived. A priority alert flashed across the main screen, an incoming transmission from the Galactic Concordance. Attention human research installation, a stern voice declared. Your mastery of wormhole technology has been noted. You are hereby ordered to surrender all research and prototypes to neutral oversight immediately. Failure to comply will result in the combined intervention of all concordance forces. You have one standard cycle to respond. The command center fell silent as the implication sank in. Tanaka was the first to speak, her voice tight with anger. After everything we've sacrificed, they expect us to just hand it over? Johnson's mind raced. He turned to the Vradilian Prime, who had remained unnervingly still throughout the crisis. What's your stake in this? The concordance seems ready to turn on you as well. The massive insectoid's mandibles clicked in what might have been amusement. Our goals align for now. The hive has no desire to see wormhole technology in concordance hands. Then I have a proposition, Johnson said, his eyes glinting with purpose. One that might solve both our problems. He outlined his plan quickly, using the research base as bait to draw in both Arcturian and Verdillian forces then triggering a massive wormhole shockwave to cripple them all in one fell swoop. Zara's face paled as she grasped the implications. Captain, the loss of life, the damage to space-time itself. It's that or surrender our only advantage, Johnson replied grimly, and condemn humanity to permanent subjugation. The Verdillion Prime's compound eyes seemed to glow with an alien intensity. An audacious gambit, human. The Hive approves. As the alien armadas began to mass for their final assault, Johnson turned to his crew. I won't order anyone to stay for this, he said quietly, but I intend to see it through. One by one, they nodded their assent. Even Zara, despite her misgivings, 
stood resolutely at her station. Very well, Johnson said, his voice hard as steel. Let's give them a fight they'll never forget. Forget, Johnson's eyes swept across his crew, taking in their iron will. Tanaka, open a channel to the concordance. The young officer nodded, her fingers dancing across the console. A holographic display flickered to life, revealing the stern visage of the concordance representative. This is Captain Johnson of the Human Research Installation, he stated, his voice steady. We reject your ultimatum. The wormhole drive remains under our control. The alien's features contorted in what might have been anger. You leave us no choice, human. Prepare to... Johnson cut the transmission with a curt gesture. And now we wait. They didn't have to wait long. Within minutes, long-range sensors lit up with approaching signatures, a massive combined fleet of Arcturian and Verdilian warships. They took the bait, Gustafson muttered, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. Johnson nodded grimly. Zara, begin the overload sequence. The hybrid scientist hesitated, her mismatched eyes filled with anguish. Captain, the loss of life, the damage to space-time itself. Are we sure there's no other way? We're out of options, Doctor, Johnson replied, his voice softening slightly. It's this or permanent subjugation for humanity. Zara closed her eyes for a moment, then began inputting commands. The base's reactor core thrummed ominously as power levels began to spike. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the facility. Multiple hull breaches, Gustafson shouted. We've got borders. The control room erupted into chaos as the doors blasted inward. Arcturian commandos poured through the opening, led by a familiar face, Commander Volkov, his eyes wild with fury. Stop this madness, Volkov roared, leveling his weapon at Johnson. You'll doom us all. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as the human security forces engaged the borders. Johnson dove for cover, shouting orders to his crew. Protect Zara! The overload sequence must continue! Zara worked frantically at her console, trying to maintain the delicate calculations amid the firefight. A stray shot struck her shoulder, and she cried out in pain but kept working. I've got you covered, Doc, Tanaka called out, laying down suppressing fire while inching towards Zara's station. Johnson found himself locked in close quarters combat with Volkov, the two men grappling for control of the commander's weapon. You don't understand, Volkov snarled. The concordance will annihilate Earth if we don't surrender. And we'll be slaves forever if we do, Johnson retorted, finally wrenching the weapon free and striking Volkov across the face with it. Across the room, Zara slumped to the floor, her strength fading. Tanaka, she gasped. Take over. You need to stabilize the critical mass buildup. Tanaka's eyes widened, but she nodded resolutely, sliding into position at Zara's blood-smeared console. Her gunnery training had given her a knack for complex calculations under pressure, and she threw herself into the task with stubborn persistence. The battle raged on both sides taking heavy losses. Johnson fought his way back to the main control panel, keying in a priority transmission. Viper, this is Johnson. Execute quantum dampening protocol now. For a heart-stopping moment, there was no response. Then a gravelly voice crackled through the comm. Acknowledged, human. Dampening fields disabled. The entire base shuddered violently as the containment fields collapsed. Through the viewports, space itself seemed to tear apart as an impossibly vast wormhole began to form. Entropic cascade initiated, Tanaka shouted over the din of battle and alarms, venting reactor exhaust to maintain the expansion. Johnson watched in awe and horror as the wormhole shockwave expanded outward, engulfing the assembled alien fleets. Ships vanished by the thousands, swallowed by the quantum maelstrom. But even as victory seemed within reach, a new threat emerged. The tactical display showed the remaining Arcturian and Verdilian vessels moving into formation, their energy signatures pulsing in eerie synchronization. They're working together, Gustafson breathed in disbelief, trying to stabilize the rift. Johnson turned to see Zara struggling to her feet, her face pale with blood loss. Not if we can help it, she said, her voice weak but determined. Tanaka. 
I need you to input a series of harmonic injections. We're going to seed a counterpulse within the wormhole throat. As Tanaka worked feverishly under Zara's guidance, Johnson led a final push to clear the control room of Arcturian borders. The air crackled with ozone and weapons fire as reality itself seemed to warp around them. Now, Zara cried out, her body sagging against the console. Tanaka's fingers flew across the controls, inputting the final sequence. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen. Then, with a silent flash that seared itself into their retinas, the competing singularities collapsed in on themselves. When their vision cleared, the view screens showed only empty space where the massive alien fleets had been. In their place hung a shimmering distortion, like a soap bubble the size of a solar system. We did it, Tanaka whispered, her voice filled with awe and horror. They're trapped in quantum flux. Johnson surveyed the battered control room, taking in the faces of his surviving crew. They had achieved the impossible. Humanity now stood as the preeminent power in the galaxy. But as he looked at the wounded and the dead, at the devastation visible through the viewports, he couldn't help but wonder. At what cost? At what cost? The question echoed in Johnson's mind as he surveyed the devastation around him. The control room lay in ruins, sparks flying from shattered consoles. The acrid smell of ozone and plasma discharge hung heavy in the air. Status report, he croaked, his voice hoarse from shouting orders. Gustafson limped to a partially functioning terminal. Sir, the alien fleets, they're gone, trapped in some kind of quantum stasis field. Johnson nodded grimly. And our casualties? Heavy, sir, Tanaka replied, her face streaked with soot and blood. We've lost at least half our personnel. The base's structural integrity is compromised in multiple sectors. A groan drew their attention. Zara stirred, her mismatched eyes fluttering open. Krull, she whispered. Where's Krull? Johnson knelt beside her, his heart heavy. I'm sorry, Zara. Krull didn't make it. The hybrid scientist's face crumpled. She curled into herself, body racked with silent sobs. Alarms blared, cutting through the moment of grief. Incoming transmission, Gustafson announced. It's... it's from Earth, sir. The main view screen flickered to life, revealing the grim face of Admiral Zhao. Captain Johnson, report! What in God's name have you done? Johnson straightened, squaring his shoulders. What was necessary, Admiral? We've neutralized the immediate threat from both the Arcturians and the Vradilians. Zhao's eyes widened. At what cost? We're getting reports of unprecedented destruction across multiple sectors. The Galactic Concordance is in an uproar. With all due respect, sir, Johnson replied, his voice hard. The Concordance's tyranny left us no choice. We... A cacophony of voices erupted from off-screen, drowning out Zhao's response. The Admiral turned, barking orders at unseen subordinates. Johnson, Zhao said, his voice tense. You need to know, there are riots breaking out on dozens of worlds. The Concordance is trying to pin this on us, demanding our unconditional surrender and full access to the wormhole drive research. Johnson's expression resolute. And your response, sir? Zhao hesitated, then shook his head. That's above my pay grade, Captain. But I can tell you this. Half the brass wants to cave, the other half wants to push our advantage. It's chaos up here. The screen split, another transmission cutting in. Johnson recognized the flowing, tentacle-like appendages of an Arcturian diplomat. Captain Johnson, the alien's synthesized voice crackled. I am Vrala, former handler to Dr. Voss. We must speak urgently. Johnson's eyebrows shot up. He glanced at Zara, but she remained curled on the floor, lost in her own anguish. Go ahead, Vrala, Johnson said cautiously. Your actions have shattered the old order, Vrala stated. But from this destruction, we see an opportunity. There are those among us who would support a new coalition, one built on more equitable principles. A coalition? Zhao interrupted, his face a mask of disbelief. After what just happened? Precisely because of what happened, Vrala replied. The Concordance's failures are laid bare. We must forge a new path or risk endless cycles of devastation. Johnson's mind raced. 
He looked around the battered control room at his wounded crew, at the shimmering distortion visible through the viewports where entire fleets had once been. A new galactic order, he murmured. Then more firmly, I agree, the old ways have failed us all. But this coalition must be founded on true democracy, on post-scarcity principles that benefit all species. Varala's tentacles rippled in what might have been agreement. We are not alone in this sentiment. Already, representatives from liberated worlds are reaching out. Even some of the Vradilian resistance express interest. It won't be that simple, Zhao warned. Hardliners are already banding together, calling themselves the Imperium. They're rallying their remaining forces, determined to crush any change to the status quo. Johnson nodded grimly. Then we must act quickly. Vrala, can you arrange a conference? Bring together those willing to support this new coalition? It will be done, the Arcturian confirmed. As the transmission ended, Johnson turned to his crew. Their faces showed a mix of hope and trepidation at the monumental task ahead. Sir, Tanaka spoke up, her voice hesitant. What about Dr. Voss? If we're going to form this coalition, control the wormhole technology, we need her. Johnson looked at Zara's huddled form. The hybrid scientist who had unlocked the secrets of the cosmos now seemed utterly broken. You're right, he said softly. Humanity's fate, the fate of the entire galaxy, may rest on her shoulders. But first, we need to help her find herself again. He knelt beside Zara, gently placing a hand on her shoulder. Zara, he said, his voice low and urgent. I know you're hurting, but we need you. The galaxy needs you. Help us make this right. Zara's mismatched eyes met his, filled with pain and uncertainty. The fate of billions hung in the balance as Johnson waited for her response. Zara's mismatched eyes remained fixed on Johnson, a flicker of recognition passing through them. She nodded weakly, her voice barely above a whisper. I... I'll try. Johnson helped her to her feet, supporting her weight as they made their way through the wreckage of the control room. The surviving crew members watched in silence, the weight of recent events heavy upon them all. As they reached the doorway, Johnson turned to Gustafson. You have command. Work with Admiral Zhao and our new allies to begin establishing a framework for this coalition. I'm taking Dr. Voss on a necessary detour. Gustafsson's eyebrows shot up, but he simply nodded. Understood, sir. Good luck. Johnson guided Zara through the corridors of the battered station, dodging sparking conduits and stepping over debris. They reached his personal shuttle a sleek vessel designed for stealth and speed. As they strapped in, Zara's gaze drifted to the viewscreen. The quantum distortion shimmered like a cosmic soap bubble, a testament to the power they had unleashed. Where are we going? she asked, her voice hollow. Johnson's hands flew over the controls, plotting a course. Somewhere you can heal. Somewhere we can both gain some perspective. The shuttle detached from the station, gliding into open space. Johnson engaged the wormhole drive, and reality bent around them. As they plunged into the hypnotic swirl of subspace, Zara's eyes widened. They emerged into a region of space unlike anything they had ever seen. Massive Arcturian dreadnoughts hung suspended, their weapons frozen mid-fire. Swarms of Redillian fighters were caught in mid-maneuver, like insects trapped in amber. My God, Zara breathed, pressing her hand against the viewscreen. What have we done? Johnson's mind focused. What was necessary? But now we need to figure out how to move forward. They passed through more pockets of quantum stasis, each more surreal than the last. Zara's breathing grew ragged as the weight of recent events pressed down upon her. After what felt like an eternity, they emerged into a system dominated by a dim red dwarf star. Seven planets hung in careful orbital balance, one of them blazing with the lights of human habitation. Trappist One, Johnson explained as they began their descent. A haven of peace in a turbulent galaxy. They landed near a secluded mountain retreat, far from the main settlement. As they stepped out of the shuttle, Zara inhaled deeply. The air was crisp and clean, untainted by the scent of battle. Johnson led her to a small cabin overlooking a tranquil valley. This is where we'll stay for a while. No politics, no war, just you 
me, and the wilderness. Zara nodded numbly, collapsing onto a nearby chair. Johnson busied himself with unpacking supplies, giving her space. As the local sun began to set, painting the alien sky in hues of deep crimson, Zara finally spoke. I don't know who I am anymore, Captain. My whole life, I've been pulled in different directions. Human, Arcturian, weapon, peacemaker. I don't know what's left. Johnson sat beside her, his voice gentle. Then we'll figure it out together, one day at a time. He handed her a journal and a pen. Start here. Write down your thoughts, your fears, your hopes. Let it all out. Zara took the journal, her fingers tracing the leather cover. She opened it to the first blank page and began to write. As darkness fell, Johnson watched her from the cabin's porch. The destiny of the universe might rest on her shoulders, but for now she was just a lost soul searching for answers. He looked up at the unfamiliar stars, wondering what new challenges awaited them when they returned. But that was a problem for another day. For now their mission was clear. Heal, reflect, and prepare for the monumental task that lay ahead. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.